And we're back as promised. I hope that you folks gave a nice big handshake to Tim out there. Now out on the runway, and I'm going to introduce you to the boys of this dynamic team because the team is what it is. Delmar Benjamin flies his airplane, and Linda, his wife, does the talking. So, Linda Benjamin, tell us all about this beautiful R2GB and your husband, Delmar Benjamin. I'd love to, Sandy. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Linda Benjamin, and I'm here to tell you all about the incredible airplane you see in front of you, the GBR2, and its pilot, Delmar Benjamin. Also today is a special treat. Up here on the Sonatron, we actually have a camera mounted on the rudder of Delmar's GB. So you will get to have a feel of what Delmar is experiencing while he's flying the GB here today. During his performance, he'll take a, the GB through a series of rolls, inverted passes, knife edge flight, and anything else Delmar may have his sleeve. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, get your cameras ready. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Delmar Benjamin and the GB R2 replica. The GBs were originally built in the 1930s by five gentlemen known as the Granville Brothers, which is where the name GB comes from, Granville Brothers. They were built strictly for racing and to be used for an assault on the world speed record. In 1932, General Jimmy Doolittle flew the GB to a world-breaking nearly 300 miles an hour record in the GB, and that record held for four years. Now on the flip side of that, the GB was also known as one of the most dangerous airplanes, killing five or six pilots in its short little one-year period. The GB then became known as the Widowmaker, or the Flying Coffin, and was forgotten about basically for 60 years until Delmar Benjamin built the replica that you see flying here today. And look at this beautiful little airplane, very happy to be flying, very happy to be in the sky with Delmar at the controls. There were no plans available when Delmar went to build the GB, as the original plans are in the New England Air Museum back in Connecticut, and the Granville family wished that there would be no more flying replicas built because of the bad reputation. Well, at that very same time, they were building a replica for to be on display purpose only back in the museum. So Delmar and Steve Wolf, who helped him build the GB, visited the museum. It was there, almost complete, ready to be covered, and they took hundreds of pictures and measurements, and from that information, went back to Cresswell, Oregon, and built the GB. Once again now, here comes Delmar in his very low inverted pass. He says that the GB is actually more stable, flown inverted, and he does have better visibility. However, it's not very conducive for landing. Now, when Delmar was collecting this information, they told him, you know, this airplane can never be banked more than 30 degrees. It's very dangerous. You have to keep your speed up at all times. Well, in the hands of Delmar, ladies and gentlemen, it does wonderful things, things that they never would have dreamed of doing in the 30s. The GB is pretty small. It only has a 25-foot wingspan and is 17 feet 9 inches in length. The stall speed is 100 miles an hour. And when Delmar did his first head test flight, in trying to figure out what the stall speed was, when he got down to 100, it of course stalled. And some airplanes will roll off to the side, do different things, but the GB actually just drops straight forward. Just like a, a well-thrown manhole cover, Delmar says. Just straight forward. Oh, here comes this beautiful knife edge pass that I just left. People say that the GB has a funny shape to it, but look at it. It looks like a teardrop. And what is more aerodynamic going through the air than a teardrop or a raindrop? Very true. You know, Linda, there was another name back when, uh, when they was rebuilding this. Uh, they happened to... Uh, uh, he was still alive at the time, Pete, and I can't think of his last Pete name. Pete Miller. Pete Miller, who was such a great help, to, as I understand it, to the building of the airplane. One of the original aeronautical engineers that was working for the, for the uh, Granville. That's family. right. Pete was um, very new to the industry back in the 30s, and he was full of great ideas. And they hired him to design the R models. And as Sandy was saying, lucky enough, Delmar and Steve got to meet with Pete Miller. And Pete remembered everything about this GB. And Delmar felt very fortunate to be able to fly the GB for Pete Miller. After 60 years of living with the horrible idea that he built this horrible airplane, Delmar proved that it's actually a wonderful airplane, probably far ahead of its time. And we felt very fortunate to be able to fly that for Pete Miller. And you know, one of the comments that Pete made to Delmar was, oh, your GB is so much nicer than the original. Is that right? That's right. Well, that was delightful to hear, I know. Well, you know, the knife edge uh, flying of the ability of the airplane, uh, 
proved another point when it was racing because the airplane probably spent about 50% of its time in the pylons in knife edge flight. So you can see why Doolittle, uh, in his quest for speed and uh, the uh, races that he won, it made it just a little bit easier for him to do that. So that's one of the airplane's attributes is that uh, is the knife edge flight. Yes, it does do knife edge flight beautifully. Delmar loves it. He said he could fly across the whole entire United States flying knife edge. No problem at all. And people say, well, that must take up a lot of energy. And what does Delmar say? The GV doesn't use energy, it creates energy. There you go. This well, that's beautiful four-point hesitation roll, total control of this airplane at all times. And you know, this GV, he has over 1,200 hours now.